for what's happening. This is part one of my three-part motion capture tutorial series. Part one is going to be involving bringing the motion capture into Maya and slapping a human IK rig on it so you can push the animation farther. Part two is going to be dealing with animation layers and the human IK rig. And part three is going to be bringing the animation from real space to in place. So let's get started. What we're looking at here is just a mesh that has a skeleton inside of it and it's got motion capture data applied to it. You can find this exact animation and mesh on Mixamo.com. It's brought to you by Adobe. You get free rigs, free characters, free motion capture. There's lots of stuff you can buy on that website. So you can use it for practice. But anyways, moving on forward, I always like to bring my shading to x-ray joints. That way I can kind of see the joints working in there. And there's my skeleton. And I also like to bring up my outliner, which is under Window, Outliner. This way I can also see what I'm selecting in case I might think I'm selecting the right joint. And I might not. Like for example, this joint right here looks like a clavicle. If I hit F in the outliner, it's actually spine 2. So just a little heads up. And the next thing I'm going to bring up is under Window, Animation Editors. Human IK. This will pop up in your channel underneath the channel box and attribute editor. And let's get started. So we have a skeleton and we have joints and we have motion capture animation. And now we just need to tell Maya we need Maya's human IK rig onto the skeleton. So first of all, we need to tell Maya, hey, we have a skeleton in the scene, let's define it. So we click this blue box right here in the corner, maybe human IK um, character controls, I guess this little tool shelf over here. You're going to see define. You don't want to create a skeleton. Maya can do that for you too, but you want to define the skeleton. Then you're going to get a little, little gooey that looks a little bit like this. If for some reason your left arm is cut off, you can just hit controls, which we have none, and go back to definition, and it should bring it back. Now. This is a little overwhelming at first. If you've never seen this, I'm going to try to break it down to you as quick and easy as possible. These little white spaces, containers, all they are are empty nodes. You see it says right here, human IK node, none selected. But if I select the hips, all of a sudden the hips are selected. If I double click the hips, it's graying everything else out. And basically, Maya is asking me now, what bone do you want the hips to be on? Well, I can select the hips through the outliner, which is right here. And all of a sudden, it turns green, and, my, and you have a green node, which is a good thing. Green's always a good thing. It means good to go. But we still have a red stop sign. That means Maya does not know what we're still looking at. So let's go ahead and move on. We're going to double click on the spine. Say I didn't mean hit the spine. I want to get out of this little state I'm in. Click outside this human in this negative space, and you go right back. Now, I don't necessarily have to go into the outliner and be like, okay, um, spine, oh, there it is, green, I'm good. You can actually go into this guy and click the spine. I'll command Z that back just to prove it. So I double click in the spine, grab spine one, and spine, or spine is in there, not spine one, correction. Go into the spine view, you click this drop arrow, I'm gonna double click on that one, grab the next spine, Spine 1, human IK node spine 1 is a bone spine 1. Things are looking good. Let's go and grab spine 2. Throw spine 2 in there. And I believe the next one is the neck. If I go to my outliner and bring down, yep, the neck is the next one. So we're going to go back to the full body view and then go into the neck view. Double click. Then grab the neck right there. The neck is with the neck. Go to the head view. Double click. It's asking me which which one's the head, I click, and the head is at the head. I'm going by this pretty fast because this is a painful long process to watch somebody do. If you wanna, if you know how to do this, if you wanna skip through the this part of the tutorial, you can, I uh, don't blame you. But once we get to the left arms and can, you know, like the character being symmetry, Maya would do half the work for you if the rig is good. Now what I mean by that is, I'm gonna grab the left arm, then grab the left arm, then Maya will automatically throw the right arm on there, which is an awesome thing. Same thing with the shoulders. If I grab the left shoulder, Maya will automatically throw the right shoulder on there. 
So I'm going to continue on the process, make it as quick and painless as possible. If you want to follow along, you can. If you want to skip me, I don't blame you. If it's your first time, though, I highly recommend following along with me. So I'm going to double click the thumb and grab the matching one. Du double click the thumb, grab the matching one. And you're just going to continue on this process. Oops, grabbed the wrong one. You can mix up the fingers if you grab the wrong ones, but as long as it says right hand and right hand, because, like for example, if I click this one and grab this bone. It would say left hand middle to right hand middle. That's wrong. So make sure you're grabbing the right ones. So we're just going to continue on through this process. Going ahead. I'm just double clicking, going into it, and then clicking the right bone. Double clicking, going into it, clicking the right bone. Double clicking, going to the node, click the right bone, etc and it goes on okay the hands are done yay let's go to the feet now you see this yellow yellow I meant to mention before is not bad if you get yellow it's not a bad thing it's basically Maya just telling you that hey I'm gonna complain a little bit because you're not in T pose if I go into the feet I don't have these bones on my character so no big deal now that stop sign went from yellow to well, went from a went from a stop sign to now to a upside down yellow triangle. So that's pretty much the green light for us to go. Hey, Maya says we're good. I kind of know what's happening in here. I know you have a skeleton, so you can lock it if you want. Now locking it doesn't mean it's completely definite but you want to lock the skin definition in order to bake the animation to it. If you do not click this lock box, you will not be able to do the next few steps. Now, the next few steps is just like this. Remember, you got to have a skeleton before you have a rig. So you go under bake, and you're going to bake the animation to the skeleton. Well, you might be like, well, hey, Brandon, you just already got you know animation baked onto there. See, I can see the keyframes down here. Yes, Billy, you're correct. It is baked on there, but also these frames are not necessarily on, well these keyframes are not necessarily on a timeline frame, that's like 12.80, and that's 13.60, 14.40, so if you put a rig on here right now, neither will the rig be on the right keyframes, and you don't want that, it's kind of hard to play with, so just go ahead and bake, bake to skeleton, and now Maya is going to do its thing. And voila, now it's all snapped onto the timeline in the proper frame. And now that you have that, you're going to want a rig. Now, the human IK rig, this is how you bring it in. It's pretty easy. Are you ready for this? Just do the same thing, bake, but instead of bake to skeleton, bake to control rig. Give it a minute. Mai's going to think. And bam! We have a control rig. So now you can push your animation even farther if you want to. You can um, grab the hand and move it around. Yay. You can select under here's a definition. Go under controls again. You can select your controls through this GUI function right here. Like here's the hips. You know, if I want them to use the FK part. Here it is. Move that around. So, yeah, now you can push your animation farther. And that's, that's where I'm going to discuss the next part of this tutorial series is how to use the human IK rig, some of the benefit things it has, and how to utilize Maya and its animation layers. Thanks for watching part one of this motion capture tutorial series.